the uh, commission meeting for February 4, 2023, um, by Chaplain Ted Stackpole coming forward and offering us invocation. Thank you for that and uh, Pledge of Allegiance then led by Commissioner Adam Zach. Please rise if you can. Thank you, uh, Chaplain Stackpole and uh, Commissioner Adams. Thank you. Okay, uh, Chair, I'll entertain, entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes as on the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the commission meeting January 10th, 2023 as in our packet. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Is there any further corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we're going to uh, recess the Board of County Commissioners and convene the Port Authority meeting. Um, and the Chair will entertain a motion for the minutes of the Port Authority. Mr. Chairman, so moved on the minutes of the Port Authority. A second. I have a motion and a second on the uh, minutes. Is there any further additions or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. I'll open the floor now for public comment on Port Authority items. Is there anybody here today that would like to speak on Port Authority issues? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. And is there, any, uh, is there anything that the commissioners would like to add at this point on Port Authority? Hearing none, I will close the or adjourn the Port Authority meeting and reconvene the Board of County Commissioners meeting. And we'll start with presentations. Um, the first one from Ms. Corona, she will come forward. Morning. 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 So it's Valentine's Day. Today we're going to show some love to Fred Lanier because he's our employee of the quarter <laughs> for the first uh, quarter of our fiscal year. Fred um, helps a lot with just everything on fire rescues. He's one of those people that we can always count on for training and inventory and just anything that's needed. Fred is happy to do it. So congratulations. Lanier is one of the people like we all dream about hiring you know the guy that comes to work on time early every day and never complains always willing to do whatever the job takes for the day um, I don't know what we're going to do I don't know what he's going to do when we all retire around him but, uh, <laughs> but, no, we're, so, we're so glad he's here and uh, hopefully we've got many many more years of him um, just, just doing the, just the day in and day out grind and he stays on top of it I mean it's what yesterday he was on top of the LVS with the mechanic helping change the air compressor know just whatever it takes to get the job done and that's really what we look for in hiring employees is just somebody that's just willing to go out there and just get a job done and Stephen there is a prime example of just somebody that just gets after it every single day so, uh, thank you again Stephen there for everything you do for us Thank you. Right. 
center for it. <laughs> Next on the agenda, we're going to move down to uh, item B under presentations, and I'm going to ask Commissioner Harvey if he will uh, come forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and fellow board members. Um, it's my honor and privilege today to um, talk about a man that, when I was chairman, I wrote a letter of support for for a topic, for a designation, basically, um, something that's earned and not bestowed. And I think that's very important to know that um, Terry Suggs, our county administrator, would you join me, please? Thank you again for allowing me to do this. Uh, recently received the Credential Manager designation from the International City and County Management Association. And this is something that Mr. Suggs has worked on. He had to do his hours. He had to do uh, classwork. He had to do a lot of things. So again, it wasn't something that things are bestowed. It's something that's earned. And I would like to read basically something that I wrote when I was asked to do this. And it says, I've watched him navigate our county from a declining financial situation to completely rebuilding and stabilizing reserves. Mr. Suggs has changed our organizational culture by recruiting outstanding talent and has created an environment where professionals want to come and work. Hiring Mr. Suggs will always be a wonderful memorial to me because I know I'll be able to look back one day and be able to say we hired the right person to make Putnam County better. And that was my quote I did back years ago. So, Mr. Suggs, you want to bring your wife down? Possibly. Five years of local government service, Terry C. Suggs, in recognition of his significant contributions and achievements in the advancement of local government administration, awarded at the 108th ICMA Annual Conference, September 20th, 2022.
Mr. McLean, don't go nowhere, sir. You ready, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, let me just say thank you. Uh, that was uh, <clears throat> that was very nice, very professional. Uh, you know, 25 years is a long time. You know, so uh, you know you don't get there. You certainly don't get there overnight, and you certainly don't get there by yourself. So, uh, first and foremost, I need to thank my family, my wife, uh, for, for putting up for what we do for the last 18 years, being my biggest supporter, bar none. So uh, happy Valentine's Day, honey. Thank you for being here. And, uh, <clears throat> you, know, uh, you know, our son, who uh, uh, got his, his uh, community service credits for graduation through working Saturdays with me for many a year, I appreciate him doing that as well. Hopefully it gave him a sense of uh, pride in his community, and I know it does because he's a, he's a fine young man. So, uh, you know, but you get this way uh, by surrounding yourself with good people. And uh, I'll tell you right now, here in Putnam County and, and where I've been, we've been able to do that. Uh, the staff that we have here, the representation of this community here is second to none. I'll put this staff up against any, any county in the state. Uh, you know, they're dedicated, they're intelligent, they're high high character. Uh, we're very blessed to be able to work with the folks that we work here and the folks in this community uh, for the last eight years. Um, there were only two sitting commissioners that were here when I was appointed county commissioner. That would be uh, Mr. Bill Pickens, Mr. Larry Harvey. Uh, thank you guys for, for uh, you commissioners for giving me the opportunity to serve Putnam County and thank you other three for allowing me to continue to serve Putnam County and uh, you know the things that we've done here has been uh, uh, through the efforts of not only you five but also from staff and folks like Sheriff DeLoach, folks like Colonel Joe Wells, folks like Wayne McLean who doesn't say no to anything when we ask him, folks like President Joe Pickens from St. John River State College you know and of course Mr. Tim Smith you know who has been an absolute mentor to me uh, for eight years and him, thank you for that, you know, and of course, you've got the godfather of all, Mr. Danny Martinez, <laughs> <coughs> who, um, when Danny calls you, you take the call, so, uh, you know, we're very blessed to have the folks in this community that we do, and, uh, you know, for eight years, it's been an opportunity for me to learn to love this community the way that we do, and be a part of this community, and be accepted in this community, but you, like I said, you don't get here alone, and, you know, uh, there's one thing that I've learned to live by, and that is you better have a good relationship with those that you serve for and serve with. And I've been blessed to have great folks around me. Uh, and I'll start with Mr. Commander to my right. When, when, you, when you're having to navigate through uh, a litigious world in which we live in, 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 in public service, it's great to have a resource like Mr. Commando. You know, and I go back, my first county uh, city attorney was Rob Rowley before he became Senator Rob Rowley, so I was blessed there as well. And I had the relationship that I have with Don Holmes, the city <coughs> manager of Flack, but also the city attorney at the time I was there, and the folks that have been in this community with me. And Matt, uh, to watch you go from city finance director to assistant city manager to deputy county administrator to uh, the Honorable Matt Reynolds of the clerk of the court, it's been my pleasure to watch that and be a part of that as well. So, uh, folks, that's my comments. It's, it's just humbling to be 25 years of public service, but it's more humbling to know that you're appreciated and it's more humbling to know that you're doing it the right way and that you've surrounded yourself with great people and you live in a great community and all you want to do is see this community prosper and grow and do it the right way. So, again, to you five for allowing us to do that and manage with my style, I thank each one of you for doing that and allowing us to do that. And I thank my staff from the bottom of my heart for all that you do for this community and do for me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Okay, uh, with that, we're going to uh, move on to, on the agenda to item number five, which is public comment on agenda items. Uh, this portion of the agenda is designed to allow citizens an opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board. It is not reasonable to expect that the board will engage, debate, or deliberate about the matters in which the board has received no prior information as part of the agenda. Please limit the comments to three minutes. Um, public comment cards are in the back of the room. The blue cards in the back of the room. Please give them to Ashley my, on my left, your right. Um, and uh, with that, I don't have any cards this morning. So would anybody like to speak under on agenda items? Seeing none, I'll close public comment on agenda items and we'll move to the consent agenda. Uh, and uh, I'll ask commissioners, would they like to pull anything from the consent agenda? Uh, Commissioner Adams Act? I have none today. Commissioner Harvey? I have none, sir. Commissioner Pickens? I have none. Commissioner Wilkinson? Hey. Hey. Okay, and I have none. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Item A, Commissioner Wilkinson. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is for the Onyx site services. <coughs> they have uh, sent a letter of immediate notice of termination for MSBU. And um, I have St. John's Harbor in my district. And um, <coughs> so I just wanted to ask staff to um, address how this is going to uh, affect those in my, in my district at the St. John's Harbor area. We have a pretty good plan, but I'll let JR, if he would, um, review what they're, what's going on right now with the rebidding and that they're going to. I'll just let JR talk about it. So our plan moving forward is, is this was an all-inclusive contract to them that we did every piece of it through. So what we're going to try to work on now is, is it's going to hit the street really soon about doing a grading-only contract uh, because that's the biggest majority of what all has to be done. And then we'll handle it by request for each one. So if we need somebody that, that trims trees, we can get a, a tree guy in there to do it and not necessarily tie it back to a contractor that does grading. Or if we need a, a ditch cleaned out, we'll get a ditch cleaning contractor in there to do it. None of those seem to be as high as, and most of the um, MSBUs don't bring in enough revenue to really send it out for formalized bid anyway, so we can actually work through some quote stuff on, on most of these MSBUs. So we're handling them right now until we get the, the grading contract out on per needed basis, and we're just able to hire a contractor to go in there and fix a specific problem at the time. But moving forward, we're going to um, put out for bid real soon as a grading contract. So you feel like this will give um, the MSBU groups more... Uh Flexibility? It will. I mean, so what they'll do is they'll bring us their priorities, and then uh, Mr. Tony is here with us this morning as well. Paprosky will be able to work through them and get their um, what, what their vision or requests are and their work orders, and they'll be able to work through different contractors in order to, to, to get it done. I think it'll give them more flexibility. I truly do. And then those who have already submitted a work order, you'll be looking at those work orders once you get Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They look at them as they come in, and they, they assign them out to different contractors. Thompson, I, I know this was unprecedented, but do you, did you have any concerns or questions you want to address? I know you had an opportunity to speak at the consent agenda, but we didn't, we didn't pull it. Yeah, this is unprecedented, Leota, and I'm not going to allow it because it sets a precedent from now on that we're going to have to do this in every meeting from here forward. Uh, Mr. Tompkins, I will allow him to speak at the end of what we're doing if there's something he'd like to say or he can meet with us or I wish you would have spoke during the consent agenda comment. But, but Bill, please understand, if I allow it now, I'm going to have to allow everybody to do it on every subject after the consent agenda from now to the end of time. Yeah, when you look at the, <clears throat> when you're in the public and you just look at the, cons the agenda, there's nothing on line A that says anything about onyx or what happened. So he would have had, had no idea okay. without pulling the entire package. And so that's, I, I understand what you're saying, but as it's a, hard for as him. A, as a courtesy to you, I'm going to allow this, Commissioner. Please come forward, Bill. <clears throat> and if you would just state your name and address for the record, please. Bill Thompson, 123 Kingfish, Palaka, 
I'm the chairman of the St. John's Harbor MSBU. Uh, you know, my concern is the path going forward and how long that's going to take. Uh, we have uh, we've basically been without maintenance since this contract was let in September year over a year ago. Uh, the county came out, did a very good job in three or four days. It did more than the contractor had done in a year, and I applaud them. Just concerned about going forward and what the plan is, how long it'll take to get these contracts in place. And again, I would ask that based on <clears throat> what the residents asked months ago, is you consider abolishing the MSBU and bring it into the county maintenance system. So yes, sir. <clears throat> We've had that discussion, Bill. And, um, I just want to say, do you have any work orders right now that haven't been fulfilled? Do. We uh, okay. submitted you know work orders. They are because as of yesterday, we didn't know of any work orders that hadn't been fulfilled. Mr. proposky has got them printed now, so we found some yesterday. It was late afternoon we found out about it, but we pulled them. We got them. Okay, well, I the whole submitted. idea of this should work out better, Bill. It really should. And yeah. the reason is, is because if they do just a grading only contract, then your price should come down tremendously, and we'll try to get somebody to respond instead of somebody who doesn't have the ability to respond. Correct. This is a short-term blip in the system, and it's not just yours. It was everyone that Onyx had. Okay. So everybody's going through the same thing. But we're going to try, the county is going to try to maintain that service in-house, what needs to be done until we can get you another contractor in place. Okay. And we need to bring it to the forefront here that last year, when y'all ran out of money, the county took that over at no cost to your residents and basically finished out the year in the maintenance system, even though it was an MSBU. So it's not like we have, we're not trying here I understand to do that. our part too. Okay. You know, so, but ho I think this will make it better, I really do, especially, I think part of what was making it wasn't just yours. Uh, it wasn't just yours, it was also <clears throat> the one in my district, excuse me, um, they went way up from what they would normally cost on all the others. And after talking to some of the contractors after this, but we were told at that time that the reason they had gone up is because they were gonna have to go out and sub somebody out to clean the ditches or sub somebody out to clean the, to trim the trees or whatever, because they didn't do that. That's why this time around, we're gonna bid it to where it's just a grading contract and then we're going to try to do the other things that you that the citizens in the committees want we're going to try to do them in another way by bidding them out or continuing services or something and that should make your overall that should make your overall price go down at the end of the year unless you want to maintain that price and it also should help give you more services than what you have now and a bigger variety of services than what you have available to you at the yeah. time our biggest concern right now is the grading and ditch cleaning. We need to get some ditches clean before the rainy season sets in here, or we're going to be in trouble again. So We're probably going to have to just do the things that have to be done until we can get another one on board. But it's, we're within day, literally days of rebidding this grading contract, not just for you, but for every one of Onyx's, of the ones that Onyx decided not to do. And, uh, and, and it's not just y'all, it's there's five of them or something or so of the MSBUs that we have to do that we're in the same shape for. We're not hanging you out there to dry, I promise you, until what such time as we can get another MSBU contractor on board. It's just not, we're not going to be able to, to go at the, at the level of service that you would get from an MSBU contractor. You get a road that's impassable or a bad pothole or something that goes on, we'll fix that. Right, JR? Yes, sir. So I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page, page here. So, um, you know, I apologize that this had to happen, especially with the controversy we had last year over yours and another MSBU in my area. But we are working diligently to try to make it better. We really are. Okay. Mr. Thank, you. thank you for that. I think that that conversation had to take place, so I appreciate it. No problem at all. Would you give us a, a motion to approve that item? Yes, sir. I move to approve motion. Um, I move to approve item A on consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second for item A on the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have a motion carries unanimously. Okay. 
we're going to move into uh, new business. Um, the first thing is the uh, is uh, going to be handled by Leanne, I'm assuming. Oh, Mr. Sullivan, thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Sam Sullivan. Uh, grants, projects, legislative affairs, and other items. Um, Don't forget port manager. Port, man. port manager, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is uh, the uh, HOPE grant, uh, which we applied for back in June of 2020 uh, on behalf of the uh, Northeast Florida Regional Council and uh, the uh, Right Solutions. Uh, after long negotiations between the Florida Department of Transportation and those two other agencies, we are finally reaching agreements uh, on how to spend that money uh, in accordance with their terms. Um, as you see, the $75,000 listed there. Um, there's also a match. The match is being paid for uh, through uh, labor um, from the, done by the council and uh, right solutions at Pasadena County. There will be no cash out of the county coffers. Letter in the package signed by um, past uh, chairman Mr. Pickens uh, attesting to that understanding. And uh, what the program would do is uh, develop a uh, do a study on uh, how to get uh, people from the community to better paying jobs with those who have transportation uh, challenges. And that's basically the summary. And the council is here if you have additional questions. Well, what do you need from us this morning? Just a uh, motion to approve the grant is that a motion to accept the grant yes sir okay. mr chairman i move approval of the motion to accept the grant of seventy five thousand dollars i'll second we have a motion to approve is there any further discussion mr chairman let me clarify it might be 83 334 uh, Matt, so uh, i'll clarify that thank you okay so uh any further discussion here yeah, and all the I just, say uh, I, oh i'm sorry I mr adams i so th this this has been talked about during the transportation that I <coughs> chair transportation thing. Um, my question is, there was talks about this idea fest. I, I wanted to make sure it was going to happen in Putnam County, and that was part of the conversation that we had. Or if let me refer there was the some to some the conversation about it happening in Jacksonville or other places, because we're talking about Putnam County. I'd like to make sure that's happening here. My understanding is it will. Good news is, even though Putnam's not within the North Florida GP or the other Hot Wheels District, as well as Lambert Chief one of their contractors, so it's going through Smart North Florida, it's going through DPO, there's a lot of people involved in this, I guess you'd say. I'm going to add it there real quick, is that, um, which we learned, is that this is the first and only hope grant in the state of Florida so far. So, in a sense, all eyes are on us to be aware of that. So, I guess you kind of answered the question. So yes, it will be held in Putnam County with a virtual option. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the list is item B, which is the uh, library carpet for the library. this change from the other day you're actually just asking for seven thousand dollars it's not budgeted no actually yes it yes it has changed and no I'm not asking for an additional seven thousand um, we went back to the vendor and he provided a quote that was lower than the sixty thousand dollars so um, the requested amount is fifty four thousand nine sixty three what we're asking the board is <coughs> excuse me originally the $60,000 for capital fund was $30,000 for Palatka and $30,000 for Melrose. So basically we're asking to put the fifty-four dollars all in Palatka and then we'll put Melrose on the next request with Crescent City and Interlochen. So you're asking for, to keep the thirty dollars that you already had for the other library and to give you twenty-four dollars more instead of seven more like it was last week. How did that get from there to here? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Last week, 
it was, um, we actually made progress. The total purchase last week was 67,000 for only one branch. We were able to revise that and now it's 54,000 for one branch. But we were always only able to get one branch done within the parameters of the 60. So now you're just looking for us to go ahead and fund the 54 for the library today. Yeah, the, the funding is there. The, the earmark in the funding denotes that it would cover two branches and we're asking the board to amend the capital plan so that it reads that that funding that is earmarked that's already in the budget is only going to cover the Palaka branch. Okay, but that's all we're doing today is taking the 60 that's already in the budget that we're supposed to cover two and spending it on one at 54. Correct. Correct. Make sure we understand. Yep. Okay, so, all right. What is the board's pleasure? Mr. Tim, I have a question. Mr. Uh, Commissioner Dickens, yeah, I've got a question on it. I, we're going to do Melrose at some time, right? Correct. Carpet's not going up. I mean, Answer the cost of like twenty thousand five hundred. The quote that was submitted for Melrose was twenty thousand five hundred dollars to do the Melrose branch. I didn't hear that either. I just heard it right now. Um, I think we ought to discuss going ahead and knocking that one out soon. Getting both of those done. Make a motion. I'll make a motion that we that we accept the bid for fifty four thousand nine sixty three and also add another twenty thousand five hundred to take care of the Melrose carpet issues uh, also. Okay. So we have a motion second. and a second. Is there any further discussion? Commissioner Harvey, your light's on. Did you have something else you wanted? That's what I was going to talk about. Uh, Commissioner Adams, Zach, did you have something? Yeah, I just, like always, I always call. For, we only have one vendor, and it's not a Putnam County vendor. I'm just curious why we didn't talk to Plaka Flooring. Some did, they were hired. Oh. This is the state again. contract, is why it's pure and pure tile was the one, because they're the state contractor for this stuff. Right. But they did talk to Black of Florian, and Black of Florian was considerably higher. So we hired? Again, I just would like to see a little note in, in the item saying that we talked to other vendors. Same as with IT, with any, any anything. Um, so, okay, as long as they were higher, I guess. I'll go with it, but I would like to see those notes in the future. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Before we get off that, I don't mind the notes being on there, but I don't want to be calling out our local providers that they might be higher. I, I think it's just prudent for us to say local people have been contacted, and that's about it. I, I don't I don't want to embarrass anybody, and, and that's not the case. So. Okay. That was not my Outside. Yeah, they, they were at my house yesterday. I, do, but I want them upset, I promise you. <laughs> but my, my, my question is I, I'd like to see, I guess if it's state contract, again, that's where it separates it a little bit, um, and that's not clear in the notion. Um, if it's state contract, I guess it doesn't matter. Let's just be clearer about that. It's, it's on the agenda that it was um, through state contract. It must be. On the, on the All right. agenda item. So I agree. We shouldn't call local vendors in. Carpet my daughter's bedroom. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with um, I agree with Commissioner Adams asking that, and Commissioner Harvey mentioned it also. And when I sat down with Julianne, I, I asked about local vendors, so she was able to inform me about that. Because I know this whole commission is uh, you know, very for you know, local business and giving them the opportunity um, to, to bid um, when they can be competitive. We Absolutely. also have to. Thank you. That's all I have. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I just have a motion carries unanimously. You always get what you want and then some, Sarah. How do you get that done? How do you get that done? <laughs> <laughs> in less than seven minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to move to the next item, which is the uh, Cal Bay Access Easement. Uh, this is basically some uh, uh, electrical the uh, solar people wanted uh, access to the lift to the um, power station and it's been reviewed by Public Works and also by sanitation to make sure it wouldn't bother any of, of the works or whatever and they're just asking for access down a road that's already there basically past us. So.
somebody has an issue, Chair. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the Cal Bay Road access easement as stated in our agenda. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Um, the uh, next item on the list is Public Works about two years ago would ask for a, um, a, a camera that they could run that they could <clears throat> look at all the culverts and uh, some other options too, but mostly the culverts. And, and we vetted this pretty hard over the last month or so. And the, the original price they came that they had on the agenda when we took it off and, re and revisited it um, was 127 and change. And they got it down by renegotiating and changing the type of the camera a little bit and whatever. They actually got it down from 127 to 96. 429. I went through, and I just wanted everybody to know that I went through the motions with them about how much would it cost to hire somebody to go out and do this on the side, how much would it cost to lease a camera, how much would it cost, all these different options. And right now we have 40 plus of these culverts that we need to shine a camera down. Well, it's about $3,000 a culvert is what it is to have somebody come shoot them with this $100,000 camera. So. You know, basically, to get the 40 of them done would cost more than the camera itself is going to cost. So we need to go ahead and, it looks to me like, and purchase this camera, and we can start doing these on our own. Um, <clears throat> so that's my two cents. Is there any uh, is there any questions or comments, Commissioner Harvey? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I met with staff about this, too, and felt better after meeting with staff. Um, just wanted to really make sure, and I got I got confirmation that this will be something that will be used. You know, sometimes we buy things and we just don't use them to their full potential. And that happened in, in Public Works case or other cases. But in this case, um, I feel like it's a very good investment into what we can do and um, it'll save our county money in the long run if used correctly. So I'll just leave it like that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve item D to purchase the pipeline camera system for the stated amount. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Um, and along those same lines, Commissioner Harvey, my biggest concern was is that we'd throw it in the back of the trunk and then shove another tool on top of it and ruin it. Um, but I've been assured that there's going to be proper training done to whoever runs this camera to understand they can't hook it to the back of the truck and drag it back to public works. So, uh, anyhow, that, that was also one of my concerns, not the dragon part. That was a smart out of the mark. I think it's <laughs> quite appropriate. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'm glad that we're doing this because I know we have a situation in District 1, so we'll test it uh, in District 1. Oh. <laughs> I'm surprised that it's wow. already not down there. Well, we yeah. tried to we tried to get a test run for this particular item, and that didn't happen. So it's probably shipped to District One. So well, I, have some in I, I was trying. Yeah. Well, just as soon as we tested District One, is one, oh, two, so and three, four order. Okay. in order. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> I think we should have a fishbowl with numbers on it and pull out the one, see who wins. The <laughs> well, Paul might want to go by last name first, right? Paul? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I just want to make one comment on it. The, the thing that really made it favorable to me is the, the multiple diameter pipe that can go into the 6 inch to 36 inch. It, it allows us to you know, get some of these smaller locations and the, and the bigger ones. Um, my worry, and sometimes you get stuff like that, it's like 18 inch and above or something that eliminates a lot of what we have here in our county. So thank you for making sure it did that. Mr. Chairman, if I could, just for to add on to Mr. Adams that is if we do get to the point where we have larger infrastructure it has abilities to change it down the road for a small amount to make it where it'll do larger infrastructure as well so there is other pieces and parts that could be added to this camera in the future if we had something that was a 72 inch culvert that it could go down and would be able to see as well thank you uh, we're going to move on to the uh I 
was not going to argue with you, I promise you. <laughs> I can't walk in another room and remember what I went after. I'm sure not going to argue about it. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to move on to item E, which is the uh, transportation alternative set aside project half recommendation. I'm assuming everybody saw them in their agenda. We've discussed them before. Uh, it's basically the TAP recommendation, so it's for bike trails and things of that nature. And, uh, okay. So the first item is the State Road 100 crossing at 309C Palaka to Lake Butler State Trail Connection. And speaking with staff, and you really can't determine this in looking at the package, um, the, I, one of the ideas that's on this, probably the main idea in speaking with staff, is a pedestrian bridge over 100. And I have a lot of heartburn with that idea, um, simply because I feel like that that's not the best utilization of dollars. And I know it's FDOT money, but at the same time, we still have to be good stewards of all the revenue and funding. And so if we were going to build a pedestrian crossover bridge, I would say that's not the best spot in the county to put it. Um, I live on 100, I mean, I live off of 100. I cross this area four times a day at a minimum. I've never seen a bicyclist sitting there waiting to cross 100 to get to 309C. 309C, the trail that's on that side was built by the county, and it doesn't even connect to 100 yet. So it makes more sense to finish the trail system all the way out, which I know that they're working on that. Um, but I just don't see this as, as one of the, seems like we should be able to utilize these funds for a better project in this county. And, and I, I, I don't know if I want to take it off, and so I just want to have this whole discussion with everybody. You guys have a lot more history. But at the same time, if we could say anything but a bridge, because I'm not good with a bridge crossing 100. When we brought this up in the agenda, had this exact same discussion almost word for word uh, I had with them and I actually was not as nice to them as you are about it and I'm not as nice as you are so um, we actually were going to take it off of this recommend recommended tap list until we found out that DOT actually requested that we place this on our tap recommendation list because none of us want a light there you know, like they have over there in St. Austin, uh, St. John's County, where you cross the bike path over 207, and to have a light there. Nobody really wanted that, and so I don't really know what the other option would be other than, and like I said, we had taken that off of the TAP, off of the TAP recommendation until the DOT re requested that we place it back on there. Now, did I miss something wrong there, Jr.? No, I mean, they they asked for support for a crossing there. It doesn't necessarily have to be a pedestrian bridge. We did get clarification on that. So it could be any type of any type of crossing, but they, they would ask us to give some kind of an application for a crossing at that point. Right, and I don't mind a flashing light, but at the same time, I'm really not sure why we're even taking them across 100 in that intersection because there's nothing that connects. And we haven't finished the side of 309C. And when we do finish it, that's just going to be a loop just, you know, you're going to go up and behind the park and up around the college and back down. So this is particular to the Palaka to Lake Butler stale, State Trail Connection. That's not the connection. The connection all stays on, one, on the perpendicular with so one what would your suggestion be to uh, just, Do we have instead another? of the pedestrian bridge, just to request a cross, a crossing there? which is what we were going to do, but then DOT, I, I was told DOT requested a, an overpass, but if they've changed their mind to just a crossing, that's where I was back before this started. Well, so I had asked for a lot of records to be pulled, and uh, Mike Nimitz had gotten me a lot of information, and yet that was part of the discussion, but and in speaking with Craig McLean at the, on the trails, it doesn't have to be a pedestrian bridge, and so I'm okay with it crossing, but not with a bridge. If we were going to put a bridge for pedestrians to cross, this it wouldn't, to me, serve the citizens. I'm good with that. So you're recommending at this point that we change that to a pedestrian right. crossing instead of a bridge. Or anything I'd like but to speak a bridge. To that before we, Pardon well, me? Pardon I'd me like to express my opinion on it. Um, I, I think it, whatever DOT deems 
right there. And I think the reason you don't see people go down 309C, I've walked and rode that trail a couple times, and now I, I may get back into that again now that I'm physically able again, um, is because it scares the crap out of people across 100, to be quite frank. Um, so they don't use 309C. We're going to be serious about the business park and other assets. That, that trail goes down by the business park. That's going to be a good thing to advertise to people as they're employing people and other things that you can take a trail on your break during lunch and you go ride and you can get to that trail, whether it's a bridge or whatever. I don't want to take any option off the plate. Um, and that does take you all the way to St. John. And uh, then that allows you where we're going to have the St. John's one towards the park to get you back over to the other areas. I, I, I think we shouldn't take anything off the table in that crossing. And uh, the safer, the better. And I think an overhead is the safest crossing we could have. Well, and, do we and how does that interfere with traffic? It's high enough, doesn't block traffic or anything, and most of them are pretty attractive nowadays. They're not ugly like in the old days where they had crazy looking fencing and just a concrete barrier. Um, the state, all the ones I've seen that have been done recently, are very attractive. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, my thoughts are a little different on that. Um, I'm not one to think about going overhead as much as I am going underneath. And, you know, we do own, the county owns both pieces of property on the side of 309C and 100. Uh, we purchased that not too long ago. Um, I could see, like, a, like they have in some areas where, say, wildlife crossing under the road. Maybe it's a little bit bigger than that. But, uh, and, and Commissioner Adams, that you're probably right more people would use that uh, to traverse that area. But I think going underneath would be a better plan than going up above. And that would be my my suggestion at that point. That's just my thought. Thank well, after you. reading this, it basically says that we're asking for a crossing there. It doesn't really dictate what kind of crossing we're even asking for. So are you saying you you still want a crossing, you just don't want a bridge, because I'm sure they would come back to us before they said, it, I'm, DOT used this, kind of like when I first showed up around here, they were going to put a roundabout at the end of the East Yes, sir, I remember that. And, uh, and I booed up about it, and they came and redesigned the thing, and they it's real nice. If you've been on East End Road lately, the turn lanes in both directions, and everything's really nice compared to what it was. And it sure would have is better than it would have been with a roundabout. Right. And so they do listen when it comes to that point in design. So, you know, it, would it be possible? Um, I don't know, Mike, you may need to come up and answer this question. You have a little more uh, experience with this type of thing. Um, would it be possible for us to make a request that we want a crossing? and let them come back with design, but then make the request that we would like to know what it is before they go through full design. Because it sounds to me like if they put in a bridge, we're going to have a, a discussion on whether or not we want a bridge. Again, this is the application for funding, so we need to have some type of design in mind when we go to submit this application. So we will need to have you know estimates and things of that nature put together. So we need to have that. I have to ask you to come forward. So, <laughs> My thoughts on it, maybe we go for the bridge. Yeah, you didn't read the cue card. And ask for the Cadillac, and then we get the Buick, per se, you know. I'm sorry, say that again. Ask for the bridge, you know. I, I like to ask for the Cadillac, and if they don't want to do the Cadillac, we'll do the Buick, which would be the signalized fault. That's my thought. She doesn't want a bridge at all. My, my, don't, don't ask for the bridge. We could go for the signalized you know, fault. My, my, my thought about a bridge is if we're, if we're putting a big bridge, millions of dollars in Putnam County, Florida, then... 100 and 309C would not be the best utilization of those dollars. To me, that would be downtown. You know, when we have festivals, people are crossing six lanes of traffic. If you're going to put a pedestrian bridge, it makes a lot more sense to put it where it's going to be utilized by more people, more citizens in this community than, uh, than some. And um, safety, yes, safety is an issue, and we certainly want people to cross. If we're going to cross there, we want it to be safe. But what about if... 100 gets um, widened. At some point, it's going to be four lanes. So we build a bridge now, and then, then 10 years later, we're knocking it down because we're four lane and 100. I mean, is all those things considered? Well, again, yes. The DOT will be the ones who will be building this bridge. It is in their right of way. So kind of what the intent is behind this application is to get them moving forward so they've you know, put some type of crossing in place. So they'll take that into consideration. They'll look 40 or 50 years out into their plans and make sure that whatever they put in will accommodate that. Right. 
Well, and so are these in ranking order? Yes. And again, this one dates back to the press Tompkins era. There were discussions about yes, this problem back then with a number of different things that you know, are transparent over the years. Mm -hmm. Again, you, you have a multitude of trails in this area going through the business park, St. John's Avenue, the one along 100. So the idea is that this was high. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could, is, you know, Mr. Nimitz, I, I don't watch a lot of TV, but uh, I've said it from my seat that I like to watch the YouTube videos and how they build roads. And, and um, is my idea completely like nuts about going underground a little bit with a box culvert, if you will, that somebody, maybe not my size, could completely stand up and walk through, but FISA might be able to go or... I, I don't think it's out of the question, but uh, again, there's a lot of unknown variables. There's the geotechnical, which we don't know, uh, the, the table, the water table, things of that nature that could significantly increase the cost of construction. Again, it'd be watering and things of that nature. Going across a DOT road, a DOT road, it could become very expensive. Those are things we have not looked into yet. Um, it would seem to me like a box culvert would be a little cheaper idea than wouldn't be so intrusive there at that area. As long as it didn't yeah. stay underwater. Yeah, as long as it didn't stay underwater. And the road would have to be raised up, and that would mean flaring down the roads a little bit further down. And I, I get all that, but I guess my question is, can we narratively say to DOT, you know, we want this possibly, but we don't want, we might not want a bridge, we might want to go under, we, we probably don't want a light there. I mean, that, that's not a good place. It's a bad intersection to begin with. You're going to stop traffic and stop traffic, and that's my point there. But I don't want to stop there like because somebody's on a bicycle. That I'm with Commissioner Wilkinson. I'm through that area quite often and hardly ever see anybody down there riding a bicycle across the road. I just don't. Now, they might. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't see it. I, I don't have a an opinion on what we should do there. I really don't. But I'd like to try to focus on coming up with a compromise here between all my commissioners on what y'all want there. Now, <coughs> I, uh, if we could possibly say, if you don't want a bridge, I don't disagree with any of the reasoning you said. If you just say, I'd just soon not have a bridge there, and you're just hell-bent on having a, a ditch dug underneath it where they can drive through, that's fine, too. Um, if Commissioner Adams Act wants something different, that's fine, but I'd like to try to bring this in for a landing and get focused on what you really do and don't really, if it, you're passionate about one thing or another. Uh, maybe we could uh, maybe we could just ask for a, a crossing at this point, uh, just as a possible compromise, ask for a are crossing at this point and let them come up with whatever they want to do. I'm with them. I've never seen anybody sitting there on a bicycle. I go through there all the time. I've never seen anybody sitting there on a bicycle waiting on them to get across the road. If they did, they could drive right behind me. They could ride across because it's not like it's bumper to bumper and this is downtown Hialeah or something. So I don't know that more what maybe what you had in mind, Commissioner? Or? No, I'm good with the crossing there if, if, you know, maybe a flashing light or something that lets somebody know they're on, you know, they're on the signal and then it flashes and said, hey, there's a biker coming across and so both parties, you know, on, on the road and the bicyclist knows. Um, I'm fine with that. But the bridge to me is a lot of millions of dollars that I just don't know that that's the best use of those dollars. No, I'm just against a bridge. <laughs> Mr. Adams, that you have I'm today. not against the bridge. I'm not against prioritizing the other two ahead of this one either, though, um, making this the third on the priority list. Um, I think there's communities being built towards the end of 309C. Um, there's, again, we want the business park to take off. I think there's going to be usage cases for that trail on 309C that's going to have it being utilized more often, getting people off 100 and off the Lake Butler Trail safely to the 309C, I think, is what's going to get the usage of that trail to actually occur instead of right now, like you're saying, it, maybe you'd see a deer on it. There wouldn't, I've never seen one riding a bike either, but I, I know the people that ride the trails don't tend to go on there because they don't want to cross 100. 
and there is no safe way to ride 100 on the right side and uh, that's the legal side that you'd have to ride on if you're riding a bike down 100 and actually on the road um, I think the only way to is either to go under like Commissioner Harvey says or to go over I don't think a flashing light does anything on State Road 100 people drive like maniacs in State Road 100 I do not drive on State Road 100 unless if I have to go to the bar I, mean, I absolutely avoid it at all costs um, because I've been going 73 miles an hour, and Larry knows I drive faster than I should, because I've passed it many times throughout Putnam <laughs> County. And uh, I've been passed by people that had to be doing 85, 90, 100 miles an hour. Um, so it, uh, it's not a safe road. It, it will never be safe, whether we put a light there or anything, unless it was a red light with a hit a button to cross, in my opinion, unless we go over or under. Okay, so <laughs> yes, sir, Commissioner Harvey. And you know, hopefully it includes a motion or something. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mike, you know the other thing I want to say. If this is a lot more complicated, that intersection is instead of just putting a pedestrian. At one time, we have taught when we bought that property to the. Let me get my bearings straight. To the east there, I believe we. Oh, we already owned that property, bought to the west from Mr. Allen. Um, when we talked about trying to straighten out that road a little bit. And, and I, think, I think if we're going to look at that intersection at all, it needs to be a holistic approach of how we can access our business park. Because, you know, again, we've had trucking companies come in. I know you want to say something. I'll give you just a moment. We've had trucking companies come in wanting to be put in the business park. And we've also had residents come here and stand here in the past few months asking us not to put any more trucks along that, that St. John's County, St. John's Avenue extension and 309C. So we've got a, we've got a really, I'm not so sure we're, we have the right plan to do something and, and with the expansion that could take place down there, I think we need to punt, tap the brakes on this one and go maybe with another with the other two or go somewhere else with it if we need a third one but we've got to look at that whole area as reconstruction and, and what that's going to look like i have no idea would we would a tap grant cover redoing a whole intersection or is that basically just for bike paths and additions in there other words could we ask them as part of this to because I don't know of an intersection hardly in Putnam County that doesn't need a turn lane coming from the from the, out towards Barden to that direction and a, a, a turn lane coming from town and an excel lane if you're in a truck and you come out of the business park and you turn on 100 back towards Palaka. I don't know of anywhere that doesn't need an excel, an excel lane more than that place does right there. So could we ask for that or could we make that a further request and ask for that because this is a safety issue and a safety pot of money is different in other words the one on east end i keep referring to it because i just went through it but the one on east end was usually a eight to ten year process we got it done in basically four and a half years from when it it started and we got designed we got it done because it was safety money and not and it's a different pot and there's more money available sometimes for smaller projects in that pot could we look at it like that and the, well dot would take those certain elements into consideration you know as long as it could be related to safety there will be additional improvements beyond just the bridge that would have to be taken into account how far that would go i, I can't really give you a clear idea of that at this point could we make now. recommendations to dot and tell them that along with this that we want d cell and xl lanes you know, and, uh, included for this for the Springside cutoff 309C or whatever it is uh, uh, in in the deal, and maybe a turn lane coming from town where you was going to turn in there from town. I mean, basically, right now, if it's real busy on there and you're a semi truck, you can't hardly get across there. Yes, we absolutely can, and more of that will be covered in the studies part of this as well when we're going through the design um, uh, process. And we include that as part of our request. Yes. The, Along with a bicycle, if this is a bicycle thing, then maybe we could lead. The, we want the bicycle crossing there, but we want to look at the whole intersection and make it safer with turn lanes and, and different things and crosswalks and turn lanes and what have you, along with the bicycle trail. 
Could we do that as part of the TAP, you think? Yes, sir. We should be able to. So it's a good time. compromise for everybody to try to get there. Okay. Do you want a motion or do you just want a consensus? We also want to It's a resolution here, so. Okay. So you, you don't like the priorities that are on here now? No, sir. Okay. What, what would you uh, recommend? I would just move one to three and two up to one. So it would be uh, Crescent City sidewalk would be one, Winton Avenue would be two, and the crossing would be three. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Anybody have a problem with that? I, I don't. I do want to talk about Winton, though. I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner Adams asked light was on, and I missed it. I'm sorry, Commissioner Adams. Asked. No, I, I my like is you had mentioned alternatives. Um, so I'll, I'll withhold that since it's have gotten away from alternatives. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, on Linton Avenue, that is off of Sun Avenue going into Interlock and Lake Estate. And, and what you'll see there is you'll see a sidewalk to nowhere. Uh, that was the Obamacare money that came out many years ago. And um, they ran out of money, and the sidewalk stops at the two roads, basically. It's, um, so this is just an, and I get a lot of heat from that from people in the community to go to the sidewalk to nowhere. But it does just end, and we've talked about it since I've been here, not to commission, but public works. And at one time, we were going to send prisoners out there and just do it. One time, our Rotary Club was going to go out there with shovels and try to dig a footer and get that going. So it's just, this is kind of maybe to finish it out to Scott, move people, because there are people that walk that road, but it would at least get those people off of that main it gets kind of busy right there. And I wanted to explain that maybe we can take a, a sidewalk to nowhere and finish it out for that community out there. That's all. Thank you. Keep it up, Sheriff. I'm going to make you leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> little private. <problem. laughs> I just wanted to say that I am trying to slow down my speed on the roads in Putnam County. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So does that mean you're for or against that being number two, the sidewalk to nowhere that's going to now be fixed? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of moving item number two up to number one, number three up to number two, and number one down to number three, knowing that uh, if number three makes it through the process, it can't be that through the process. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? I just have a motion carried unanimously. And by the way, it didn't surprise me at all that Crescent City became number one. I, know. <laughs> I appreciate the, the extra love on Valentine's Day, yeah, Commissioners. I, I guess we can take the camera down there, the new camera, and take pictures of the new intersection. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we're going to move into code enforcement. Mr. Thomas Moore, Esquire. Got a chance to read that. Before you get started, Thomas, y'all need a recess, or are we good? Let's take five. Okay. We're going to take, sorry, Thomas, we're going to take a five minute recess.
a meeting back to order here. And, uh, Thomas, if you would uh, start for us, please, sir. We have a piece of property um, that has a lien that's attached um, for a previous owner um, attached to regarding another property that he had owned before. Um, and he's trying to sell this parcel, and he is requesting a partial lien release for this parcel that does not have a code case. Um, I did tell him that I have to present it to the board for approval. Okay, so just so I understand this correctly, <coughs> excuse me, um, the person who's asking for the lien release, partial lien release for this particular piece of property, is he the person that had the violation on another piece of property that are, that's asking for this, or did somebody buy the property and they're asking for the release of the lien? He's the original person. Now, the property with the violation is in a different owner's name now. Well, in most cases, this would be a slam dunk, but I think if we're not careful here, we're fixing to blow up a can of worms that will never be fixed. Um, <clears throat> and the reason I'm saying that is what if, if we take the lien off this, then we need to just go ahead and make it to where it doesn't attach to two properties if you own more than one property which I always kind of thought was a little unfair anyhow, because if I own 10 properties and have violation on one, and then there's a, a, uh, a lien that attaches, it attaches to all 10 of mine, but if I only have one property and has a problem, it only attaches to that property. <clears throat> That's not quite fair. I understand the enforcement value of that happening, but it's not quite fair. Um, and so we either need to see about changing that or... Or, or leave it alone, I mean, one or the other. I think we should see about changing it myself and back to where the, the violation would be on the piece of property that the actual violation was on and not on everything else that you can attach to from the person. Um, that's another way to look at it. What are you looking at me like that for? Okay, so it attaches to everybody that, well, it's, Okay, so we can't do anything about it, but it's unfair as hell. I'm just telling you that if I have 10 pieces of property and I have a violation on one of them that attaches to all 10, but you only have one piece of property, your violation is bigger and it only attaches to one property. Um, so if I sell any of my other nine properties there's no violation on, somebody's got supposed to clear up that one violation. Does that mean we don't have the authority to, take, to do what they're asking us to do and take the partial lien on one piece of property? So he's asking us to release one that never had a violation on it at all, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Moore, I think I got confused during your narrative there. Did you say that the other parcels that Mr. Ritchie owns are no longer in his name? Parcel that with the, with the lien... The parcel that has the lien, the, the violations, it's no longer in his name. It's now in his ex-son-in-law's name. But the, the lien was filed in Mr. Ritchie's name in 2007, so it attached to everything he owns. He owns three properties. So he sold that property with a lien on it, and his son-in-law bought the property knowing that the lien was on it. Yes, sir. And didn't clear it up. He's tried. He's, um, this case has been going on since 2007. He's, he's, it's for enclosing a garage. He's pulled two permits, one in 2007 and one in 2020. Um, neither one of the permits was ever approved because he didn't supply all the documentation he needed. Um, he did pull another one, um, another permit, December 20th. This last year, um, and we're waiting for 
one piece of information for him to get the permit. Just you know, the law. So the question I have, did, so we changed ownership on the property that it leaned the violations on. Yes, sir. When did he do that? I mean, was 2013. that? 2013. Oh, that was a long time. So this whole enforcement is because they didn't pull a permit on the closing of the garage? That's yes, what all this is about? Yes, sir. It required, it required engineered plans. It was after the fact. It can't be a, it can't be a regular permit. It can't, it can't go through inspections. So it needs an you couldn't engineer. just go out there and look and see if there was any code violations without fighting over this for since 2007? Say that I'm again. Critical. No, I mean, say that again. Take it like that. Say that we, we've taken it to all the magistrate hearings. It's got a date in the foreclosure order. Um, and we have to give them a chance to pull the <coughs> permits, which he's done three times. But they're, but they're living in this enclosed garage since 2007? They're living in the house with the enclosed garage, yes, sir. And burnt down here. basically sold the property to his son-in-law or whoever, to, to somebody else, and they're still living in it. And they're trying to, to rectify that situation, but because he owned multiple properties over the permit that he didn't pull, um, so you're asking, he's asking today to release, partial release the lien on a separate piece of property that never had the no permit violation to start with. Yes, sir. So if I could make a motion, I'll tell you straight up, I'd make it. I'd, I'd release the lien on the property. That'd just be me. I mean, really? On all the, uh, Commissioner Adams, back your lights on. And this thing, it says something about trash debris tires and stuff as well. Has that all been <coughs> cleaned up? And yes, sir, that's all been cleaned up. So all we're talking about is the garage now? Yes, sir. And the garage was, what, a pole barn or something that they... No, sir, it, it, it was a regular two-car garage on the home that he just enclosed and made into a living space. I got what you're saying. So they just added a bedroom or something into it. Yes, sir. Didn't pull a permit, so all these years later they're trying to take their home and all the other property they own because they didn't pull a permit on closing in the garage. And there was no special case? There wasn't an ill <coughs> family member or anything like that that... Mr. Chairman, I move approval that we release the partial lien on this, this request. Second. Uh, Commissioner, uh, we have a motion and a second under discussion. Commissioner Pickens, if you have something to add. Is he now compliant on this one? Or is he just attempting to get compliant? No. Finally, we got the engineer plans. We're waiting for um, an AC report, something, some two, two reports from the A that has to do with AC. That's um, on the original property, isn't it? Not on this one we're releasing the yes, lien. That's on, on the that's original on the one original with the, with the property that he doesn't own anymore. anymore. This property here never was. In oh, a, okay, it never out was. Of okay. Okay. It just attached a lien okay. attached to it because they didn't pull a permit when they uh, closed their garage back in 2007. They're taking care of that. Well, it's sold to somebody else. That so was a separate so. owner owns that now, and that person's trying to take care of it. What I'm promised to say, and he's trying to take care of the original violation, even though it's not in this person's name at the time. I'm good. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carried. <coughs> Thank you, Thomas. And Thank please you. understand my frustration had nothing to do with aim that you please. Uh, every now and then you run into a situation that you just feel like is perhaps a little overbearing from government or unfair or whatever, and this just happened to be one of those that struck me that way. So it well, wasn't aimed at you, my friend. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, the, uh, that's really a shame when you hear stories like this. But 
somebody liable to lose all their properties everywhere because they didn't pull a permit. Uh, so anyhow, next we're going to move down to item nine on the agenda, which is the Honorable Matt Reynolds, Clerk of Court. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Um, but second, I'd, I'd like to take just another moment to, um, to congratulate Mr. Terry Suggs on his, his award that he received today. It was just a very, very well-deserved award, 25 years in, in public service. I am very fortunate to have been um, worked with Mr. Suggs for almost a decade of those 25 years now. He and I talked about that yesterday. It's, it's been um, hard to believe it's been that long. Um, but I will say that um, I wanted to say that I, I would not be in the position that I'm in today if it were not for Mr. Suggs, and probably not in the, the traditional sense that most people think, because you know, he gave me the opportunity to be deputy county administrator, supported me in, in my, um, uh, when I sought out this position. Um, it's more so because when he first got to the, to the city of Palaka, I had, I had another opportunity face to me, and I told him that. I think it was the first week that he, he made it to the city of Palaka. That's obviously not something that you want to tell your, your boss when they first come in, but I thought he needed to know, and and um, I made the conscious decision after after, think, after talking with him and, and thinking about it that um, that I wanted to stay working for him, and that, that decision alone was what uh, led to the opportunity that, that put me in, in the position that I am now. So I just wanted to Tell him thank you and congratulations for his award. Thank you, Matt. <coughs> uh, maybe you lose your place, Jamie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to uh, move into appointments here, item 10 on the agenda. Uh, Commissioner Adams, Act, do you have any appointments for us today? I have none. Commissioner Harvey. I do have one, sir. Uh, the Zoning Board of Adjustments, uh, I'm replacing Amy Stanley, where she actually expired, and Troy Weaver, and he has filled out the Citizens Forum, and Laura has it in her position now, so Troy Weaver will be on the Zoning Board. Okay. That's all you have today, sir. Thank That's you. it, sir. Thank uh, you. Commissioner Pickens, do you have any today? I have none. Uh, Commissioner Wilkinson. You know, there's none on here for district. There's some at largest. Yes, sir, I have one. Um, waterways and Trails, I'd like to um, nominate Jody Lee. He's retired from the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, and I think he would be a great uh, resource for that um, committee. Okay, uh, we're going to have to vote on that because it's an at large appointment. Yes, sir. Uh, so no second is uh, needed as, a, as a recommended. So uh, all in favor of Jody Lee, say aye. Aye. Opposed, I just have a motion carried unanimously, and I have none to add today. Um, just for a uh, record, uh, Congressman Waltz, welcome this morning. Uh, please come forward. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Unless you want my chair, sir, I'll come stand <laughs> down there. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's great to be with you, and I just wanted to take a moment uh, and come by and, and say hello, address uh, you and the, and the, the commission and all of you, uh, and then also all of Putnam County. So with redistricting that we do every 10 years, uh, I uh, currently represent uh, parts of St. John's County, uh, Flagler, Volusia, and now uh, am stepping into some, some high heels with Kat Kamek and Representative Kamek. Uh, and before her, Ted Yoho, uh, to represent Putnam County, and then uh, out to Marion and, and parts of Lake. So we're going to be doing a lot of driving. My, my district now spans from St. Augustine to Ocala, down to the villages, and then back over to, back over to Daytona. It's really, truly uh, my honor. Uh, I took uh, and was elected to the seat after uh, then Congressman DeSantis was uh, elected to be our great governor. Uh, and come to this with years of 27 years now of, of military experience as a Green Beret in the Army, uh, but also uh, with uh, business expertise, uh, and grew up in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, 
proud, proud West Side uh, boy that uh, spent many, many uh, a weekends, and I believe it was always on Memorial Day, coming down to the Blue Crab Festival to have family uh, from, from Palatka. So never in a million years, and only in America, uh, would I find myself now uh, in this position. I just wanted to share with you a couple of priorities uh, that I have. I sit on the Armed Services Committee uh, and now have, uh, at, will be chairman or am chairman of our subcommittee on military readiness. That has oversight of all training, all of our bases, all of our military construction uh, worldwide, and including obviously here in Florida. That will always be a priority for me. I believe just as a governing philosophy that the number one job of the federal government is to keep us safe. Uh, pretty much everything else we do, I will fight to push down to your level uh, and make sure you have the resources that you need, uh, but that the decisions are made as locally as possible. Things are obviously handled differently in Putnam County uh, than Montana, than downtown Los Angeles, uh, and as it should be. Uh, but you all, as great as you are, can't keep the country safe, can't <coughs> defend our borders. Uh, and that's the federal government's job. So keeping a strong, healthy, robust military will always be a focus of mine. That's how we keep the peace uh, around the world. I think we've just seen in this last week a very visible symbol uh, in the balloon of the uh, avalanche of espionage that we are facing in our universities, in our tech sector, in our businesses, in cyber. Uh, and uh, that's something that we have to uh, absolutely uh, combat and we have to win that competition. I don't want our future generations growing up in a world led by the Chinese Communist Party. That is their design. Uh, that is their goal in replacing the United States. That's something that, that we have to stop. And then uh, here uh, locally, uh, I am a, a real advocate of bringing businesses into North Central Florida and bringing growth. Uh, we have pushed uh, with varying levels of success. All I can do is push and then try to provide the federal resources that are needed. Uh, a vaccine manufacturing company uh, that um, has some amazing technologies. There's no biohazard needed. They actually can re re uh, reproduce it chemically rather than biologically. Uh, to trick the body's antibodies, and this is for Alzheimer across, you know, for all types of vaccines. Uh, uh, we've pushed for those. We've pushed for an electric boat company uh, that's going to try to be the Tesla of boats. Um, I could keep going uh, on, on down the list of things that we are trying to incentivize coming into North Central Florida. The space uh, commercial sector, I want it gravitating north out of Cape Canaveral and not south out of Cape Canaveral. And what they are doing, I mean, folks, there is a company there that literally is building an entire rocket out of 3D printing, the whole thing, uh, with the goal of eventually putting those printers up in space and manufacturing rockets in space rather than down here. But that ecosystem uh, can spread and is spreading uh, from here all the way up to from Cape Canaveral all the way up to Cecil Field, and I think can be really transformative uh, for our economies. I know, and I've already heard from a number of business leaders, there are issues unique to Putnam. Uh, I, I am all ears, and I just want to take a moment to introduce my district director, General Brigadier General Retired, Ernie Audino. Uh, and uh, we have multiple offices throughout uh, throughout the district, but if you haven't got to know uh, General Audino, please do. Uh, he is really uh, our our team's eyes and ears on the ground here in the district when when I'm stuck up in D.C. Uh, and for anything that any of our constituents need, uh, I take district services incredibly seriously. Yes, we'll push the big legislation, we'll fight about it. Oftentimes, I want Washington not to do things as much as I want them to do things. Um, but in terms of taking care of, uh, of our constituents on their federal needs in Social Security and immigration and the Department of Veterans Affairs, the IRS, uh, or whatever they need, 
that, that, will, uh, that will go to our team. So please don't hesitate uh, to give us a call. And I will make sure every one of you have my number uh, and anything you need. I truly view that I am here to support you all. Uh, last thing, Florida uh, gets really the short end of the stick when it comes to federal dollars. Um, these formulas and how these funds are distributed out to the states uh, are incredibly dated and have not kept up with the massive shift in population we've seen in this country. Uh, case in point, there are many of them, but case in point is for, for water, for clean water, whether that's beach renourishment, uh, 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 different types of resiliency along the St. John's, wastewater, runoff. Uh, for example, New York gets double the money that Florida does, despite now having a smaller population. So those are things that Senator Rubio and I are working on. Obviously, those other delegations and those other states have a real incentive to not lose those federal dollars. But you know, one of the things that, that I will continue to fight for is to get those formulas, whether it's for bridges, for water, uh, for federal highways, you name it, shifted so that we get uh, our fair share. All right, with that, I'll stop. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for letting me stop in and, and say hello. I, I, I really am honored to work with every one of you. The county commission, in my mind, is where the rubber meets the road for what our citizens need in their, in, in their daily lives. So thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you. All right. All right. As always, Congressman, it's great for you to be in Putnam County, God's country. <laughs> uh, glad you came by this morning. We appreciate it very much. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, would you mind? Uh, not at all, Mr. Harvey. Privilege. Last week, we, uh, a few of us were up in D.C., Mr. Studge and Julianne and Sam Sullivan and myself. And Congressman, you were very gracious to be our first meeting that we had. Uh, we talked to you about our port and you were excited about that, and we will reschedule that meeting to go out and look at the port for another date, um, and also the water projects we're working on that actually Congressman Micah started. So this is a lot of things are, are the stars are lining up for Putnam County, and, uh, and we do need those projects. But I just want to say how gracious you were to meet with us. I know it's, it's tough. The, the bell rings and you have to go vote. We get that fully. Uh, so we do, but you're right, you know, where the rubber meets the road is when we walk into Publix or Hitchcock's grocery store or, or church and someone says, I want to talk to you about this garbage pickup or I want to talk to you about the pothole in the road. That's what we deal with. And, and, uh, and we're fine to deal. We signed up for this. We ran for this knowing that was going to be the thing. But it's truly an honor to serve the citizens of the county. It's an honor for you to be our congressman. We look forward to a great relationship. So, so thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey. Um, we're going to move on with the agenda at this time, and we're going to move into public comment on miscellaneous items. Uh, this portion of the agenda is designed to allow citizens the opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board. It is not reasonable to expect that the board will engage in debate or deliberation about matters on which the board has received no prior information. Please hold your limits. To your uh, comments to three minutes. Um, comment cards are in the back of the room. Um, please give them to Ashley, my left, your right. Um, Nathaniel, oh, Nate. <laughs> I didn't know who the hell that was, Nate. You need to just put, or Nat, excuse me, you need to just put Nat on here instead of Nathaniel Gill. I didn't know what. <laughs> Exactly yeah, no right. kidding. Sometimes that's good, sometimes not so good. <laughs> okay, so this will be quick. Uh, Nathaniel Gill, 105 Shady Oak Lane. I need to do all that. But um, I'm here again to represent our union and to represent the county. Um, I'm the president of the local firefighters union, Plus County Fire Rescue, and we are doing a fundraiser uh, this Friday. I know it's been out and about. We're hitting the radio station. We're hitting the news channels, we're hitting everywhere we can trying to raise some support for this young man. Um, Nathan Scott, five-year-old, was burned to Christmas Eve, 75-80% uh, of his body. I was speaking with his mother recently within the last few weeks. He's on the ventilator. He's at 
Burn Center in Texas. And the prognosis for him as well, um, seems like he is going to do just fine, uh, but not without a long road to recovery. So when I stepped into the union presidency about a year ago, um, kind of had a focus to start to change some things. We wanted to change our relationship with management. We wanted to change our relationship with the community. Um, I, I specifically, um, I'm on a focus of doing what's right, getting our union to look at doing what's right, getting uh, our, our union management relationships to be what's right. And then uh, in situations like this, where you have the opportunity and the platform to do something good for people that need it, why wouldn't you? Uh, good people have the opportunity to do it. Because of it. And so we stepped into this partnership with this family, uh, this, this young mother, and they have uh, four other siblings. And they're uh, they're in a bad way. They need our help financially. They need our help uh, as the future runs on for the, for the life of this child, the challenges he has ahead of him. And we're standing in that gap. For them. So we did a boot drive, raised a tremendous amount of money for them with that. They're super proud of our community coming on board with us and helping us out with that. And then now through the generosity of Hitchcock and, and our Commissioner Harvey doing the cooking and several others and staff that are going to provide cooking and help for it uh, this Friday on the 17th we're doing a large fundraiser. We bought some very large raffle items that we're excited about. Um, $5 a ticket for the raffle items and going to be doing a $1,600 trigger grill, uh, turkey hunter set up from button and feed, a gun raffle, uh, all kinds of stuff. It's all on our website, and uh, I would just encourage everybody, anybody that has the opportunity to do this, any business leaders, any business owners that would like to get involved with this, uh, we are a 501c3. 100% of the profits are going to this, um, to this child and his family, and we're really hoping to make a difference. Uh, we, we really should. We have an opportunity. We should. So we thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I appreciate all the help. It's this Friday, um, the 17th. It'll be right here in the grass lot from Board of County Commission that as well, just getting us some good exposure and um, you know, help us make a difference in this kid's life. So we should be impacting the community both on a political level and I, I just feel on an on emotional level, on a, on a spiritual level, on a helpful level, anywhere we can, we should be making an impact for the better good of our citizens. So we appreciate it. Thank we, you much. That's all I had, sir. We also appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate, you know, living in a small community that makes me even prouder of our first responders that they'll go to this level for a family in need like right. So, yeah, big kudos to you and your uh, fellow firefighters. It's been really neat to see, honestly, when I stepped in as the president of the union, we were kind of a splintered faction. Um, there, was, there was a lot of stuff going on that just kind of needed to be mended and fixed. And I'm, I'm slowly along the way, I feel like we're gaining some ground with that. And the number one deal that I keep uh, telling the, the people that I serve as their president is the minute the community sees that we're valued, um, then we are valued. And until then, we're nobody. We're, we're firefighters that get paid a wage out fires and take people to hospitals, but when we're valuable as a community, when they see that we're willing to stand on our street corner with guns all day long, with a boot and a sign, for, for not us, that money didn't come into our community, it's not sitting in our account, it's just this family, and then all the work and effort and preparation that we're doing for this fundraiser, the community needs to see that they matter to us more so than on a level of receiving a paycheck, driving them to hospital, putting out their chest fire, or whatever, they matter to us. And Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think you did a great job following the congressman, honestly. <laughs> and, uh, actually, you brought me to tears, and you didn't, sir, so you know. <laughs> but you know, one thing you hit on, this is the best community in my, I've never lived anywhere else but here. But there's not a weekend, there's not an event that some, we're not raising money or helping somebody in this community. We're not split apart like a bunch of areas are. We might have differences of opinion, but at the end of the day, we come together to help our people out and help everybody else out that needs it. And I'm just blessed to have a God-given ability. I've never cooked 2,500 wings. We're going to see if God gives me that ability on this coming Friday. But I'm praying he does, so uh, I'm a little nervous. But we'll, we'll get through. We'll, we'll do the best we can, and we'll provide a good meal. But thank you for all your I will say our raffle numbers aren't quite what I expected, so just a shameless plug if you are going to be putting in on the raffle. <laughs> Uh, chances of winning are a lot better than what I expected they'd be. So they get in on the raffle, they're cheap. A lot of really great items, and every bit of it goes to the family. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Did you bring something with you today? Nat, did you bring something with you today? Uh, I don't have any, but I can actually get some. And then How are you going to sell any if you don't have any in your pocket? <laughs> Nat, yeah, the, no, the answer is yes. I actually made a note of all that. Make a call right now. Make a call. I'll get some up here, though. But we do, they're, they're all over. Raffle tickets online, you can get them off of our Facebook page, and then we also have um, forms that are a lot of the businesses that 
have little scan items that we're doing a, a platform called Zephy, so you can scan that raffle item with your phone, it comes out of your account. And, and yeah, you need to bring me some raffle tickets. <laughs> <laughs> not one of those app things. <laughs> Matt, you got to remember what the old farmer said, you can't sell out of an empty cart, so. <laughs> okay. Is there anybody else today that would like to speak under public comment? Seeing none, I'll close the public comment portion of the meeting and ask uh, Administrator Suggs if he would like to make any short comment. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. <clears throat> Just a couple. Uh, Matt, thank you. Uh, really, I, <clears throat> I do remember that evening <clears throat> quite well and uh, uh, proud uh, for the relationship we've shared for almost a decade now. So uh, that was, that was uh, a very nice. Uh, thank you again, Commissioners, for this morning. That was uh, extremely pleasant, and uh, uh, I really appreciate the uh, recognition, and I appreciate everybody that was here today. Uh, happy Valentine's Day to my wife who sat through this meeting today. Uh, I do want to touch base just real quick, follow up on Commissioner Harvey. You do, we did just get back from D.C. <clears throat> First meeting was with uh, Congressman Waltz's office, and so, uh, you know, the team that went up there had a great visit, a great uh, three days up there. Uh, met with a lot of folks pushing our projects, our two Army Corps projects, our environmental water project, as well as our large port project. So uh, any continued support, we certainly would appreciate that. And uh, just know that uh, your staff did you well up there in D.C. this year with representation and the communication about Putnam County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Slug. Um, Mr. Commando, would you have to add anything today, sir? <laughs> okay, so basically we'll have the meeting at 8.30, open the meeting, then recess, go into executive session, and then come back into the meeting and ballot will handle it. Okay. No, not an issue. Everybody catch that for sure? Okay. Next meeting is going to be at 8.30 in the morning. Okay, start at 8.30 in the morning. Okay, uh, Commissioner Comments, we'll start with Commissioner Adams Act. Yeah, I guess since we have the Congressman here, I just want to thank you for coming here today. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting you at an RPOF meeting a couple quarters ago. I was clean shaven and had a much shorter haircut. Um, as a veteran, I really appreciate what you do for veterans. At that day, you gave out some little coins, I believe it was, and I got one. I had the pleasure of uh, actually giving that out to a World War II vet that goes to my church, and uh, he's he's gonna his family's gonna give it back to me someday, and hopefully that's a decade from now. So I really appreciate what you do for veterans. Appreciate you being here. I think you're absolutely right to fill Cat Kamek's shoes as far as her energy level and the way that she gets out and about is is gonna be a tough shoes to fill. Um, one thing I might ask is, and I don't know if that plan is to establish some hours in the county. Um, for someone from staff that people can come make appointments. That would be fantastic if we did that. And uh, just, again, I appreciate everything you're doing, especially for the veterans. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Adam Zack. Uh, for those comments, uh, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, come to my attention on February 27th, uh, Chili's is going to be doing a fundraiser that day for the Patriot Guard riders in Florida. So if you feel like you need to eat at Chili's, and 15% of the proceeds are going to go to them. I do want to say, um, I want to give a little shout about a political rally that was held here during the campaign. And a lady was given some very bad information during from a candidate for office. I was able to be in the room. I called the person over. I said, that's not the correct information that we can do. Mr. Suggs and I intercepted the, uh, the next day. We met with a lady named Mrs. Keyes over at the Jenkins, the old Jenkins School. The candidate said, we don't have the money, we can't do that, and truly that was not right. What had happened, there's a drainage pipe, and there was a wooden sidewalk over that. Well, Public Works jumped right on that, Mr. Suggs did, and uh, that was part of the safe route to school, if you remember. So uh, the plan was a little bit, it was already in the works. That's been done. The sidewalk is poured over that drainage area. And it might sound like a little bit, but Congressman, this is what we talked about. This is what we deal with at our level. 
these kids were having to walk around that wooden sidewalk into the road back to the concrete. And Mr. Suggs saw that and said, fix it right now. We can do this. And that's how things get done at our level. And it was really good that Public Works jumped right on there. Mrs. Key is so excited about it. She actually wants it named after her. But I said, no, we're not going to do that. But uh, that was just kind of a joke. But, you know, it, it's nice to see at our level when you get those things done. And, you know, I hate to say it, but sometimes we ride down the road and we see that dead possum laying there. And it's been laying there for years and nobody's ever messed with it, so no big deal. But until somebody brings it to our attention, and I say this on the radio every time I get a chance, you know your area. If we don't hear from you, we don't know it. Let us know what we can do to help you, and that's the bottom line there. And then, last but not least, today's a special day for my wife and I. Um, I don't know why my wife took a chance in marrying a 23-year-old punk. Looking back in pictures, you look at that and go, God, I thought I knew everything, and I didn't know anything. Um, but 38 years ago, my wife took a chance on me. She had two children, two small girls, and um, then we had... A year later, our youngest one, so three daughters, she took a chance on me, and, and uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful ride. Uh, we've been blessed by God and our family, and now we're into the great-grandchildren phase. So it's really fun to watch how our life has gone. I've had a successful career in, in the grocery business and in the insurance business, and now uh, being the county commissioner at my level, and it's just been a night. So... Linda, if you're watching, happy anniversary, 38 years, and I'll be home later today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey. Uh, Commissioner Pickett. Yeah, thank you, Chairman Turner. Um, I'd like to start by you know, welcoming him, as the rest of the commissioners did with uh, Congressman Waltz. I look forward to meeting you in hopefully in just a few minutes. And uh, thank you for your service in the military to uh, our country and what you're also doing in your elected capacity. Um, and welcome to Putnam County. Um, I do want to say that, um, Minister Suggs, congratulations on your 25 years of service, and especially the, what, five years of service? Is it almost six years of service to Putnam County? And it doesn't take me long to remember back uh, four commissioners sitting up here uh, making the decision of the, uh, to decide who was going to be our next county administrator. Um, one of our commissioners at the time had become ill and resigned, and we had not had an appointment from the government, uh, governor at that time. So I remember sitting here and um, I said, you know, it's a pretty serious deal, this vote that I have. All of them are serious, but this one's really serious. And you see how it turned out, and I think it, uh, it worked well for Putnam County. We've had our challenges from different hurricanes to COVID to the economy, um, retaining employees, and uh, you have been a great leader through this whole, this whole time. And the staff that you have surrounded yourself with, I think is second to none. And I just want to thank you. Thank you for what you've done for Public County. Um, I wish, wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. Larry, I think, you know, some women, they finally just wear down and they feel sorry for us. <laughs> and then they decide to break down and have a weak moment, decide to marry us. Okay, so I want to wish my lovely wife, Holly, of uh, 34 years, a uh, happy anniversary. Uh, I do not have to take her out to dinner because she, uh, before it was usually she was coaching basketball or, or volleyball or something, but now she's a school board member, so they have a school board uh, meeting this afternoon, so I don't have to take her out to dinner. And, uh, Minister Suggs, I just have to ask this. Um, there was a, a pretty popular song back in the 60s, and I think it was by Bobby Sherman, and it was, Julie, Julie, do you, do you love me? Did you get up on Valentine's Day and sing that to your lovely wife, Julie? I just want to know. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, sir, I do know that song, and I have sung it. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. You, you hear it? Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Figgins. Uh, Commissioner Wilkinson. Thank you, Congressman, for being here today, and thank you for uh, your service. Um, but most of all, thank you for your attitude um, that you bring to Putnam County as far as being a down-to-earth person that people can talk to and having your staff available for our district. Um, that's very important, and I appreciate that so much. Um, 
I wanted to mention um, that we had received some money for broadband, um, certainly from the federal level down to the state level. Um, it doesn't come directly to Putnam County. It goes to the service providers, but we did receive over $5 million. And so that's a big, that's a big uh, deal for this county, and it's going to put fiber in the ground. I'm surprised Larry didn't mention it, but um, I hope I didn't take your thunder. Uh, but you got to go first. <laughs> But anyway, um, so that's a big deal, and we're glad to be able to start getting that fiber out hopefully pretty soon. And uh, there's more, more uh, things coming with broadband, but that's the first, the first round of it. And then second, I just wanted to um, ask about the animal control. Where are we at on that? That's something that's near and dear to my heart. Where are we at on that facility? I'd like to get an update. Yeah, we had our last um, meeting to, ne to begin negotiations, and the firm is working with their designers to try to bring us back some conceptual designs that meet the what we need in the facility as well as our budget. And we are waiting on them to their engineers and designers to be ready to present that information to us. So we're, so we're getting there. Yes, ma'am. Progress. All right, progress. Okay. Um, that was my all my comments. Other than uh, Eugene and I have been married 35 years, and Instead of buying candy and roses this year, we went and got a, a new mattress. <laughs> a 360. We spent a lot of money and got a, a sleep number. So that's when you know you're old. <laughs> Unfortunately, you. I've had one of them for years, so that means I've been old for years. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Wilkinson. I don't know whether I want you to say anything or not, if you want to know the truth. Between you and Gator, y'all giving me a hard time today. Oh. I, Commissioner Wilkinson, that brought to mind when Liz and I first got married, and some of you in the room will understand what I'm fixing to say. You know how you go, well, back when I was so poor. Remember those comments that oh, we yeah. made? You know, we slept in a bed that if you moved too much, the spring would cut you. So you, <laughs> you taped it down with duct tape, you know, until you could afford to buy one. So I, I understand that comment. The thing you could afford duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, I, uh, I want to take just a minute here to also again thank Congressman for coming seeing us today. But uh, um, I want to talk just a little bit about a couple of things. Number one is our public works department right now is being worked on very hard by the employees of public works and by our new deputy administrator of operations and. Uh, and as anybody that's ever had anything to do with the government knows that it's frustratingly slow, but he is making some progress over there, and he's only been in that project a few weeks. So, Jr., kudos to you. I see you working hard at it. I really do. And I just wanted you to know that I see it, that it's happening. And some days that you may not think oh, so when I call up all excited because somebody's ditch didn't get dug that day when they told me it was going to get dug. But I just want you to know that we appreciate you, buddy, and we see your efforts that you're making on behalf of the county, and I, uh, I've got a lot of uh, confidence in you. Um, also, <clears throat> this is the sixth year of Mr. Suggs' six-year contract. He had a three-year contract with a three-year rollover. Uh, unless the board's going to slap my hand or be upset, I'm going to negotiate a new contract and bring it back to the board for their approval after he and I have chance to sit down and talk about it. So unless somebody has a problem with that, I'm gonna, we're going to start on that venture in the not too distant future. So you know, I felt the same, but yes, sir, thank you for that. Um, also, before Congressman Lee's Congressman, I'd like to give you one of our Putnam County lapel pins that you could, <laughs> that you could uh, put on your lapel whenever you want people to know that you actually know us people down here in God's <laughs> country. <laughs> I'm going to give you one for Ernie, too. I'm going to walk around.
can just stay right down there if you'd like to. Is there any more business to come before the board today? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned.